our lives and we're like, well, I don't know what my purpose is. Like, am I actually living out my purpose? Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. It's Princess Renny here and I hope you're doing well. If you're new here to the channel, don't forget to go down, click the subscribe button and also click the bell button so you're always notified whenever I post a new video. Uh, for today's video, I will be talking about I'm Christian, but I do not know my purpose. I feel like this is a topic that a lot of Christians talk about, but a lot of people in general. We always wonder, why are we here on earth? Like, what is it that we're supposed to be doing? Are we doing the right thing? Or are we just wasting time? And um, in constant conversation with God and also with some friends and like reading the word of God and trying to figure out like, Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing what God has called me to do? A lot of things have come to my realization. A lot of things have been revealed to me as well. Um, and being that today is actually one year that one of my beloved aunts passed away. And, you know, I, one year ago, I was like an emotional wreck. It was very hard to see past that dark cloud. Um, but I thank God that I have my family and I thank God that I have friends that are there that are motivating me and encouraging me and always there um, praying for me most importantly. So um, this being a year, um, I'm able to look at it in the sense that like she was such a peaceful person. She, you know, loved God and she was sold out for him that she gave her life to God. I want to say like five to seven years before she passed. And, um, you know, I thank God that she made that decision before she passed away. I thank God that she's made an impact on so many lives uh, throughout her life. You know, she was so selfless that like, literally there was like a story that someone told about like she would be heading home and she would give her last dollar to like whoever it is that may ask and to the point where she would now have to ask like a family member for funds to go. But she would give her last and know that you know, whatever else she needs is coming from somewhere. And that's the kind of faith that I want to have, like knowing and trusting that God is telling me to do something and do it selflessly without having to wonder, okay, but what's going to happen next? Like, what about this? What about that? So, um, I say all that to say, like, sometimes we're living our, um, our lives and we're like, well, I don't know what my purpose is. Like, am I actually living out my purpose? And I feel like this is a loaded topic, but I do want to share this revelation that was revealed to me, um, that God trusts you with a certain amount, right? We talk about the story about the master and the servants that he gave um, different uh, talents to. So we know about the person that had um, five different talents where um, he was faithful with it in the sense that even though he got five bags of gold, you know, that likening to talents, um, he was able to go and gain five more. And the one that um, was entrusted with two bags of gold was trusted to get two more. But the person that had one bag of gold, like that one talent, chose to bury it and said, you know, I didn't want anything to happen to it. I wanted to make sure that I, um, you know, still have it, right? Um, so he said, so take the bag of gold from him and give it the one to the one who has 10 bags for whoever will be given who, for whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance whoever does not have even what they have will be taken from them and throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth so this is a new international version um but the entire scripture was from matthew 25 verse 14 to 30 and i'm just like summarizing the story because i feel like i really want to focus on that person that had the one talent that like the others had so many different talents they could have done so many things with it but sometimes god trusts us with like this one thing um maybe it's this one person that god is entrusting us to lead and be a guide but we want to be a pastor of this major church you know maybe there's we don't have any children of our own but god is blessing you with someone that you can adopt and you could be a blessing to them and you're like well nope this is not enough like i don't want to do that and we're so focused on the things that we think we should have in life versus on the things that God is entrusting us with. And I liken that to like my YouTube channel. Like I'm a very small YouTube channel, but I'm grateful to have the 255 subscribers that I have because it's not about me at the end of the day. Like if at least one of you guys watch my video and you're like, wow, this is a blessing. Wow, this is amazing. Like that's 
it. Like that's, I'm doing what God has called me to do. And I was literally having this conversation with one of my friends the other day. Like we need to stop comparing ourselves to like, oh, this person has five. This person has two. I only have one. Like it doesn't matter how much you have. It's not only, it's I have one. What can I do? How can I make sure that I'm using my time wisely and doing exactly what God has called me to do? So I have this other aunt as well. She's very wise. And one of the major things that she um, told me um, when she was studying to be a pastor, um, she said, you know, um, that I kept running and I kept running from God. God was telling me to do this. He was telling me to do that. And I was like, no, God, I'm not doing it. And it was to the point where um, she finally decided, okay, God, I'm getting a little older. You know, I'm going to listen. I'm going to do what you called me to do. And um, yes, yeah, she was in school for about two months and she found out that she was really, really sick. And that like story scared me as a young child because um, I did not want to be in that position where like I was so caught up in wanting to do things that I want to do versus doing the things that God wants me to do to the point where I ran out of time. And we often wonder like, what is our purpose? Like we always have this question, like people try to like idolize this thing. Oh my gosh, this amazing purpose, this thing that God has called me to do. Like I need to find it. I need to see what it is. But every single day that you're alive, you're walking in purpose. Every single moment that you spend with God, you're walking in purpose. Every single moment you choose to be obedient and do what God has called you to do, just like the story. Um, the expectation wasn't that he um, hid that talent or hid the bag of gold that he had, but was for him to go out and to use it, make use of it and multiply. So if God is trusting you with uh, a person. God is trusting you with a certain amount of money. God is trusting you with a certain amount of influence. You need to make sure that you're utilizing Utilizing that in a way that is going to multiply and not just for you, not for your gain, never for your gain, but for the glory and the honor of God. So you want to make sure that every intention that you have lines up with God's purpose and that you're constantly focusing on that. And I'm in a season where I'm like, I need to make sure that my headspace is right, that I'm like focusing on God's purpose and exactly what he's called me to do. Um, I'm really passionate about this, as you guys can tell, so I'm, sp I'm speaking so quickly, but um, it, it's very frustrating when I hear someone saying, well, I don't know what my purpose is or like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, God is always directing you. God is always speaking to you. He's always revealing things to you. The question is, is there white noise? Like, are you listening to different voices, voices around you? Are you listening to different influences that aren't necessarily of God that are turning you away from the thing that he's calling you to? We don't know how much time we have here on earth. We need to make sure that we're doing the exact thing that God is calling us to do and constantly every single day, every moment of our lives, making sure that we're seeking him to make sure that whatever it is we're supposed to be doing in that second, in that minute, in that hour, in that day is exactly what he wants us to do. Um, and I urge you and I encourage you to make sure that you're constantly in relationship with God and you're seeking him. Um, I'm reading this book called um, Mark the Circle, Circle the Mark, Circle Maker. <laughs> I always forget the name. Ooh, Draw the Circle by Mark Batterson. There we go. Right? And I'm on day 26. And this book is just... Whew, it's gonna rock your world honestly like the book is so amazing and it has definitely changed my prayer life to the point that like I've put away my prayer wall I used to have like a wall like a I had this like bulletin where I like put all my prayers on it and stuff obviously it's like personal things I literally have like friends names like family members names and specific prayers that I'm praying for because I feel like at the end of the day just like how you have a vision and you write it down and you make it plain you also need to write down those prayers and you need to make sure that you're constantly reminding yourself of it and you're praying for it without um stopping praying with without ceasing um just to make sure that um, one, yes, you keep it in the back of your mind. You're always praying about it and you're trusting God that this is going to be an answered prayer. And then when God does answer that prayer, that you are reminding yourself, like, look, God did this. I know he's um, more than able to do this other thing. So um, it's very important that we con consider our prayer lives and that we have that relationship with God, that we're always listening to him, always seeking him for every decision that we're making. Um, there's this really important quote that I saw and I 
thought it was really, really interesting. It's a quote by Bishop Rosie O'Neill, and it says, Procrastination is the arrogant assumption that God owes you another chance to do tomorrow what he gave you the chance to do today. And that quote like hit me. I was like, yo, that's so real because sometimes we get so caught up in like how we're feeling or the way that we're perceiving certain things that we're like, well, you know, maybe later, maybe tomorrow, maybe another day. And it's like, God, it's like, I'm telling you right now, like now is the time to do it. Cause you don't know if tomorrow's promise. You don't know if you have the next minute or the next hour. It might be a missed opportunity. You need to make sure that you're constantly listening to God's voice and you're not procrastinating on the things that he's calling you to do. So I encourage you in this moment, in this season and today, as you're watching this video, to seek God and make sure that you're listening to his voice and that you know exactly what it is that he's telling you to do now there's so many questions about how can I hear God's voice how do I know that I'm hearing God's voice how do I even start speaking to God we speak to God and it's like a conversation that you're having with a friend because he is a friend he sticks to you closer than a brother and he looks out for you with every single thing that you do every day that you go by he never leaves and he never forsakes you so we know that like he's always here I can literally be like, God, like, thank you for this day. Thank you that you've blessed me, that you've kept me, that despite, you know, the hurt um, that I may be feeling because of whatever it is, you know, thank you that you're keeping me. And I could say that like today, again, on the anniversary that, um, you know, my aunt, my beloved aunt passed away, that I can stand in front of you guys and say like, I am grateful to God that he's kept me. I'm grateful to God that he's opened my eyes to see that I should be grateful for the little things that I have um, and that I should use it wisely to multiply it so that it can be, bring glory and honor to his name. So I encourage you again to continue to hear God's voice, continue to seek him, continue to speak to him because he's always listening and he is guiding your footsteps. You just have to trust him and you have to believe that he is the author and the finisher of your faith. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I will continue to keep you in prayer as I hope you're also keeping me in prayer. Be blessed, spread love, and stay beautiful inside and out. I love you guys. Bye.